What's up guys? Pursued Fire here today with another Minecraft data pack tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to be going over scoreboards and everything about them and why they are one of the most powerful things that you can use for your data packs. So let's not waste any more time. Let's jump right into it. All right. So the first thing you're going to need to know is the scoreboard command. So that is simply scoreboard. If I can type scoreboard and then you'll have two options you have objectives and players so first thing you're gonna need to do is add an objective so uh you're gonna click objective and then you get this list of options you have add list modify remove and set display obviously we're gonna want to click add here and then you're gonna give it a name so we're just gonna call ours test okay and then you have options of what kind of objective you want to track so you have like air armor you have killed by if you want to you want to track uh, how many players the player has killed how many blocks they've mined what kind of block they've mined and so on so then what we're going to want to add here is a dummy objective what this does is it creates it it makes it act as a variable so you can just have a sim it just stores a number that's the best way to put it it just stores a number so once we have our objective added here in our load.mc function we're going to go over to our tick.mc function and we're for this example we're just going to go ahead and make it uh, remove a remove one point every uh, tick of the game so we're gonna go scoreboard and now we're gonna hit players here okay so now we want to remove it from every player so let's go uh, remove players remove at a test one so now every tick of the game uh, we will remove one test score from every player uh, that is currently on the uh, the server or the world or whatever. So let's go ahead and head back in Minecraft and test this out. Back in Minecraft, so now you may notice that we don't have anything happening. Obviously, first we're going to want to reload our data pack, so we'll go ahead and hit reload. Um, but now we can't see our score, so we don't know what is going on with it, if it's working, if anything's happening. So to see our score, we're going to go ahead and type in slash scoreboard, or in your data pack, you're just going to want to type in scoreboard. Uh, we're going to do objectives. And now we're going to go down to the very bottom and hit set display. So now you have three main options here. You can set it below their name, which will just show up below their nameplate. Uh, you have list, which shows up on the tab menu under the uh, in front of their name. Or you have sidebar. And what sidebar does is just adds a little, uh, little GUI element over here that shows the score, shows all the players, and so on. So we're going to do that. We're going to want to show the sidebar. We're going to hit test. And then we're just going to hit enter. And there you go. So now you see it's constantly counting down every tick of the game. So right now we are below 1,000. So now if you wanted to play around with it a little more, we can do scoreboard, objective, set display. Uh, we could make it to where it only shows for anyone on the aqua team, black team, blue team, whatever. Or if we just don't want to show it at all, we can just click sidebar and hit enter. And that removes it from the, the side of the screen. Okay, so now we know how to create our objectives, we know how to display our objectives, but now let's get into the real meat and potatoes of the scoreboard command and how it is so powerful. So the reason why it's so powerful is because with the scoreboard, you can actually create fake players. And these fake players can act as custom variables in the game that you can use to modify, um, use to track things, and so on. So they're very, very powerful. I actually used uh, the fake players for my seven days to mine data pack as well as my calendar data pack to keep track of days and time and all that so they can be very very powerful so let's go ahead and let's create a simple timer uh object or player here that's going to actually keep track of a timer so we're going to do scoreboard players add and then here instead of selecting one of these options we're just going to type in a fake player name so i'm going to call this timer and we're going to create it under the test variable here okay uh, and now we're going to add zero to that because we don't want to actually add any any uh, value to it just yet. Now that we have our fake player added here or our variable, we can actually now use it to uh, keep track of something and create a function with it. So let's go ahead and head over to our tick.mc function file here. And inside of here, let's go ahead and change this at a to our timer player. Okay. So now, it's, instead of removing one from every player in the game, it's just going to remove one from our timer variable. So now that we have it counting down, let's go ahead and make it check to see if we hit a certain value so that we can trigger a function. So we're going to go down to the next line here, and we're going to type execute if score, 
And then we have our list of players that we can cha uh, choose from here. And we're actually going to want to choose from Timer, our fake player, of our objective test. And now we have all these options here for what we can test for. So all of these, these greater than, equal to signs, uh, these are what you're going to want to use if you want to test up against another player, another variable. Um, but we're just going to go ahead and use this matches down here because this is what we can use to test against a actual value, a hard number. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to want to test if timer matches zero, but actually we want to do less than or equal to zero. So to do that, we're going to do two periods and a zero here. These two periods, these two dots right here, equals uh, less than or greater than. So if they're before it, they're before the number, then it's less than. If they're after the number, then it's greater than. So we're going to test if our score timer is less than zero. We're going to want to head and run a new function. So now we obviously have to create this function. So let's go over to our sidebar here. Right click on functions, hit new file. And I'm just going to type this out. As, I'm just going to name this message.mc function. Remember to add the mc function at the end there or else it'll just create a text file. So in this new function here, we're going to want to make it say something. So let's go say quotation marks and it is currently uh, 1229 of 21. So let's go ahead and make it say happy new year <laughs> just for fun. Let's hope that 2022 is better than 2021 and 2020. We don't want three terrible back-to-back -back years. <laughs> so let's just say happy new year. And then we're going to want to reset the function down at the bottom here or reset the scoreboard, I should say. So we're going to do scoreboard players set timer ooh, timer. If I can spell it, there we go. Timer of objective test. Let's make it a hundred. So every hundred seconds or every hundred ticks, I should say, sorry. Uh, every 20 ticks equals a second. So every hundred ticks, we're going to want it to say happy new year. All right, so now if we go into the game, we should be able to test this out. But before we go into the game, we actually need to come back into our uh, tick.mc function here and actually call the, the function. So let's go down to our tutorial function, uh, do colon, message. Now we can hop into the game and test this out. Okay, so remember to reload your data pack. All right, so now that it's reloaded here, you can already see down at the bottom, it is starting to say Happy New Year every time. If we want to see this on the side, we can do scoreboard, Objective, set display, sidebar, test. And now we'll see it counting down, hit zero, resets. All right, so that's gonna do it for this video. I hope it helped you out. If it did, leave a like down below, comment that it helped you out or any other suggestions for more videos you need to know. Uh, I hope this wasn't all over the place because there's just so much that we need to go into with uh, scoreboards. Uh, definitely can't cover it in one video, so we are gonna make some more. Uh, we didn't even get into triggers, which basically allows you to create your own commands in vanilla Minecraft. So we're definitely going to cover that in another video. But yeah, so that's going to do it. So I hope you enjoyed. I hope it helped you out. If it did, comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and a happy new year.